So here we are at Heads of State, and I went through a couple of quick turns, both of which tried assassinations and failed, actually. Uh, Blue tried to pick off this one. If he had won, he'd have two, four, six, whether or not he replaced it, to four, five, and would have owned, uh, had the majority in the German states. Likewise, Red went after this guy, which would have given him the majority, because he would have had 2-3, uh, this isn't a black guy, would there? Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure. There was an assassination down here that didn't work. Because this is not black, this is green. I find that very disturbing, the bordering, the border colors. I am just dyslexic color-wise. So black made a poor play on their turn. But red could have taken command by killing off that one. Uh, I'm not sure what black thought he was doing down here then. I mean, he was just mistaken. And now, on the green turn, just before it, we have a revolution. And it's time to start counting points. What do we do at this point? Well, we go country by country. And let's look at Spain since they're where we were just focusing. Red's got two, three. Green's got four. Yellow's got one. Black's got one. So green will be getting seven points. And red will be getting four points. Okay, let's go up to France. And here we see black has the definite lead. I don't have to even count these, do I? I mean, we got four for red and four, eight for black. Okay, so I did. So black gets ten points. And red only gets two because France, it's not that good being second place. Over to Britain. Well, the most we have are twos. Red wins the tie having this. And that's a big bonus for them. They pull eight points in, putting them up near the lead. And second place is Blue, who gets a big three. And finally over here to Germany, four, five, six, seven, to two, three, four, five. It's gonna be yellow then blue. Yellow gets six points. And blue gets the kind of cheap five points. And there we see things. Uh, now we've now I've got to reshuffle and reset up uh, the, the attributes deck. And then we start over from where we were, which is really uh, right at the beginning of Green's turn, because this was during the replenishment that this happened. I think kind of uh, an exciting point, uh, just at least for the yellow player. He was able to get the points together for a duke, mainly just by drawing randomly from the deck. He had uh, some of the cards heading that way. This is where he was going, but he managed to get enough together. Puts it here. That gives him a presence. In he's placed a noble in every space in, in the German states. So he gets eight victory points as the first person to have done that, and that gets him up in with the leaders. Now, clearly, other people are aiming for that in other country in other uh, territories. So it's not that huge a bonus, but it is a bonus over Blue, who's the other person who could have gotten that easily. All right, we'll continue on with Black then. The Black player's just done the same thing. He played a, an assassin, managed to kill this count here, spent a pretty little courtesan, put it in, and he has now gotten someone in every French territory and grabs a seven point bonus for that. 
putting them again back well in the lead. And there we've spun around. And I replenish the assassin. And you can see there's sort of these they, there's this uh, rhythm to the game I think that develops, which is as you get close to the revolution, people's desires change completely. They've got to work on their their getting the points from the territories that are going to come up from here. But in between that, you want to work on your bigger goals. You know, uh, try to collect this, which yellow is one away. If he gets a king, he gets the first one of those. I don't know where everyone else is. I don't think anyone else is that close. Um, you really need a prince or a king to be considering it. And he's got a prince. Now he's thinking, I want a king too. Uh, All right. And again, we've come to a kind of interesting point uh, on the green player turn. They were drawing for a king. They had a lot of cards. I think they needed a soldier and they could do it. Uh, they ended up not getting it and having too many cards and buying a prince up here, which is okay, I guess. It takes them away from being able to get the crown in Spain, which would have been a nice move, then they would have gotten those points, all kind of nice things there. But throwing cards away isn't really to my taste either. I figured, okay, some of these are kind of rare like Castle, but we'll, we'll go for what we can and, and take it. Now everything's filled. There's a couple crowns left, uh, Spain and England. But for the most part, there's no way to fill a vacant slot anymore. You have to assassinate at this point. All, all the titles have fallen except the big ones. Which means that you're either drawing cards towards a big title or you're going to set yourself up and just wipe something out right away. And just The game's taken a, a different turn because of that. The green player just managed to collect a big enough set to get the king of Spain. And that gives him a dozen points because it completes his cycle, and he can get this back. He doesn't need it anymore. And it granted him uh, the points for, for the crown itself. So a dozen points on green, not yellow. Yeah. Having the same colors for the countries and the players is very disturbing to me. I'm not sure what the answers are, you know. You have lots of different colors. But having pieces that relate to them, it becomes confusing. Hey, I am in Spain, but I'm not the yellow player. But look at all these yellow things I have. I'm sure it's not a problem when you're not playing solo. Okay, onward. So we're seeing a little bit of shaking up as... get to that in a moment. Um, as we're seeing players trying to fulfill the family getting one of each of these. Some of them are very close. Uh, a couple of them need either a king or a prince. This guy actually has the king and prince. He's missing the count of all things and a marquee. Likewise, black had most of them. He was missing the duke and the marquee. And he just picked up the duke by assassinating, or murdering, or whatever, a blue duke up here. Not necessarily hitting the person in the lead. He'd rather be hitting green, there's no question. But, he wanted to make sure that he makes his cards valuable, and doesn't want to go drawing in there, hoping to get something that might let him hit, uh, say, this guy. This also helps him, because he's getting closer to getting the whole Britain collection. And maybe if he gets the King of Britain, he'd end up owning the, the, the big point value there. All right. Well, we're on to another turn, I guess. So we're still going through people assassinating or removing various leaders so that they can get their own. However, we got the yellow and he was able to turn in enough cards to grab a king. He had two places he could put it because he had to do a lot of draws to do it. Uh, so he couldn't do an assassination. He tried to do it. Plus, that's hard to do, remember. It takes two in the capital. 
So he chose England. And he'll get the eight points for England. Which puts him up to 30. But he's also the first to complete a full family. So he gets another 16 points. Wow. Uh, I just cheated. It's that red uh, because it's England. Eight points for England is 23. And now 16 more puts him up to 39. And who knows if I'm keeping track of the points right because of this confusion. I never have this when there are chits with, you know, flags that represent the proper alignments or whatever. So like the Habsburgs would have their own symbol and they could still be within the countries. Just uh thought, you know, representing colors for everything doesn't necessarily work for me. Some sort of symbol would help. Okay. Well, it's time to replenish, and I'm going to do that right in front of you because I suspect we have a good chance of getting a revolution. Nope. Okay. Well, I'll go on to black. Yellow really thought they were very careful not to draw anything from the deck because doing so might provoke a revolution and they wanted these points more importantly they wanted the position in England because this puts them at four and there is no one else who has more than two so they would have gotten uh, the big points off England let's see if that shakes things up at all and the last crown has fallen so now everything is filled blue managed to get enough points to get themselves a king card. Uh, they absolutely wanted one. They did not want it to be Germany. They've been playing, preparing for it all along. But they don't have treachery cards in their hands. They couldn't assassinate and take a different king. This solidifies their hold in Germany. They wanted to play it before the revolution comes out, which I think it may be guaranteed, yeah. So indeed, there we have the revolution card out again. All right, which means we get to count points per country. Yay. Uh, well, let's start with Germany this time since we just played it. And let me move, let me find my die and make sure red gets the next turn, basically. I don't want to forget that. Uh, blue's turn is over. Everything's going to get reshuffled, that deck. These get thrown back in, they don't get reshuffled, but a new pair come up, and then we'll be moving the marker forward. Okay. So let's look at Germany first. Germany, uh, four, five, six, seven, eight. Blue is going to win in Germany, there's no question there. And it looks like yellow's got second. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. There was just enough dominance in enough places. So blue gets the six point German. And yellow will get the five point German. Okay, let's go to France. Ooh. So this is black at four, five, six, seven, eight. They look pretty good. Two, three, four, two, three, two, three, four, five. Looks like green, green has the next. So black will get the 10 point bonus for France. And green will get the mighty two point booby prize. Green, see here's the problem. The yellow player has lots of green on him, and the green player has lots of yellow. <coughs> Maybe I'm just yellow-green colorblind. Let's go down to Spain. And here green has four, five, six, seven, eight. Looks like he's going to have that. Uh, versus two, three for red, two for yellow. So green gets the big seven-point bonus. Red, I believe, gets the four-pointer, which isn't too hot. They're doing pretty poorly there. <coughs> In fact, both the players who started the game off are doing poorly. And they start with a penalty in terms of number of cards. 
there's not a lot they can do with their initial hand. I don't think that's the effect here, especially since blue gets an extra turn. We haven't done uh, anything that blue's really... We started with Germany. Blue won Germany. Who the hell did I give the points to? Uh, it looks like they have them. I'm going to have to count their points and see what's going on here. 9, 19, 22, 23. Yeah, they're really doing that poorly. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. All right, over to red. Blue has four here. Black has three. And nobody else has more than two. So blue manages to sneak the lead over here in England, giving them eight points. And black has second place with three. And it's pretty clear, you know, we've got a bunch of people up at the lead and a couple of people down at the back of the pack. Some of the attacks, etc. Uh, especially this big 16 pointer. That put Yellow, who was in the back, right up there. And they've had this kind of hold and, and not play things right away type attitude all along. It may have hurt them a little bit where they didn't get that first victory um, space. And they're not getting a lot in terms of these. Uh, so I don't know where they're going to get their points from at the end of the game. They've already kind of blown their wad. They've visited all of Germany and they've gotten uh, uh, the cycle for the royals, uh, for the family. Well, i got to reshuffle the deck and then come back to the red turn. And I'm going to send this up at this point because we just finished a major scoring round.